Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Justin with Core Work Node here with a, another tutorial with uh, Unity and in GUI. And uh, today we're going to be focusing on um, creating a button, but not only creating a button, but actually paying special attention to the notify option in the widget uh, with for the UI button on the click event and stuff like that. Uh, this is a pretty simple issue uh, to, to fix if you're having a problem with it. Um, a lot of new users to NGUI wonder, well, where do I put my code? Uh, where did, you know, do I just add a coding script to the object and stuff like that? And, uh, and maybe some users just aren't that well familiarized with uh, programming altogether and, and methods invoking methods and stuff like that so this is a very very simple tutorial on uh, creating methods in c-sharp and and how to invoke them using the in gui uh, button click notify option all right so uh, to go ahead and get started we're going to uh, alt shift s that's going to create a new sprite alternatively you can go over to the uh, in gui option or menu item in the menu strip and uh, do create and then sprite up to you. Uh, it looks like my button's already pre-sized. I'm just going to roll with that size. And I'm going to bring him on over to the top right corner. Again, placement's not that important. Uh, this is just a uh, tutorial about a button, but uh, I'm going to continue this tutorial series on uh, this little framework I built here, so I might as well make stuff look a little neat. I'm going to change my button. It's not a big deal. And um, the first thing we're going to do is add a, well, we can add a box collider. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Uh, alternatively, you could size this uh, to be the dimensions of your button and stuff like that. But the, the thing that I find the most useful is just uh, go up to your widget and you can see the box collider option has uh, been added. And you can check that and it will auto adjust to match the size of your sprite most amazing thing in NGUI or one of the most amazing and GUI just makes it easy yet again uh, but you can go ahead and check that that will uh, make your box collider exactly where it, what it needs to be if you don't want to check that like I said you can just frame it out yourself however you want it but for this uh, purpose of this video I'm just gonna go ahead and use the uh, tool that in GUI provided the next thing that we need to add is a button script or button component um, once we add that that's pretty much it our buttons functional you can add some stuff uh, like the play sound uh, which I think is rolled out with unity or uh, excuse me uh, in GUI and also some example sounds that uh, if you imported the in GUI examples you'll have like tap so if I go ahead and press play I can click the button and uh, maybe you can hear it's uh, playing a sound, it's highlighting when I hover over it, and uh, it's obviously uh, getting darker as I activate or press the button. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. You've probably already uh, accomplished this, and that's probably could be one of the reasons you're over at this video. Um, let me go ahead and change the name real quick. I'm just going to name this home button. And now, uh, just playing in our scene view, we want to create an empty game object. Again, control shift N if you want to and you can just uh zero out the position if you want to whatever and i'm just going to call this code block you can call this code handler whatever this is just going to be the handler for our code and our scene um I, I choose code block because when i think of a bunch of methods in a single script i think of blocks of code that are being invoked as needed uh, thus code block so we're going to add a component and I'm going to just uh, name my script code block you can uh, name it whatever you want to really so I'm just going to create an add and I'm going to go ahead and edit our script all right go ahead and uh, make this text larger for it everyone and uh, I'm just going to create a public bool real quick. And uh, I'm just going to name it iWindow. 
I'm going to set it to false. And I'll explain more about that in a little bit. That's just for testing purposes uh, so you can kind of get a better understanding of how everything's actually working. Uh, so in my script, I'm just going to create a public um, method and I'm going to name it home button. Uh, it makes sense. This is the method that our uh, home button that we created is going that it's the method it's going to invoke so uh, why not add some similarity and, and just name it what it is it's the home button method <laughs> all right and um, for right now I'm just going to allow it to print out home button or excuse me I'm just going to print out home window because a home menu how about that okay uh, we press the home button it's going to display the home menu or whatever but it's it's just right now it's just going to display this text uh, we're not going to get in in uh, spawning windows or anything like that but this is just a general hey this is how it works okay so we've created a script we saved it we're running we, we, we uh, press play <laughs> I can't talk and uh, we press the button and nothing's happening the main reason this is, is we've got to go back over to our home button we created within GUI. And uh, you will see under the uh, U button or UI button script component, uh, the on click notify is empty. We're going to go ahead and drag our code block over there. Once that's over there, uh, it gives us, it says, all right, for notify, we're going to, uh, you know, handle code. We're going to do code block. Uh, what do you want to do? What method, you know? So we're going to invoke uh, code block dot home button because obviously we're clicking the home button. So we can go ahead and press play again. We press our home button, and as you can see down here, uh, home menu, which was the text that we wanted whenever we invoked the method. We keep pressing it, and uh, we're going to keep getting a result. So, what about uh, this? bull that we created over here i window is anything happening with that when we press the button obviously it's not um, right now because we didn't code that i'm using i window as a uh, uh you know as a example for spawning a window and how how it reacts if you already didn't get it from this uh, but this is just a little bit more in depth or a little bit more of an example I guess you could use um, so we can just do if I window equals false excuse me is equal to false I seem to do that sometimes with bulls I don't know why uh, I forgot my parentheses as I usually do sometimes we'll go ahead and close that out and what we'll do is um, first off we'll send a message a debugging message for us um, I window open or I window we'll just do show now I'll be more literal I do I window true and um, then we'll go ahead and we'll take I window we'll change its value to true when we click on it because it was false we need to switch it over to true and uh, we could do it else with this, but I'm just going to do else if and uh, do I window is not equal to, or excuse me, is not equal to false, which you could do is equal to true, I guess, but uh, wh whatever, you know, just different ways to do stuff, but don't do null. I mean, it's going to have value either way. <laughs> All right. And uh, then we're going to print i window false and uh, obviously we're going to change the value of our bool variable uh, to false okay um, so obviously the point of this tutorial isn't to show you how to do if statements and else if statements with bulls and bullions and stuff like that whatever um, but it's just a general open and close and, and how we're going to do that for uh, our imaginary, and I'm doing hand quotes right now, window. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press play. 
I'm going to click, as you can see on our code block, our script, our iWindow bool is uh, currently false. If I press the home button, it's saying iWindow true, which would pretty much show our imaginary window or our window. I'll press it again, it's going to switch back to false. So that's a simple way to open and close or uh, change a, a value with a click of a button. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. This tutorial was pretty much uh, short and sweet as I expected it to be. Uh, but this is just a uh, common little dilemma for uh, new users within GUI and uh, you know non-programmers that you know are either getting started in programming and like, hey, where do I put my code? Um, I see it on the forums all the time. I got messaged about it not too long ago and I figured I would go ahead and create this simple tutorial. I'm going to recap real quick and I'm going to let it go on that note. So on our home button that we created, we pretty much just created a new sprite. We added a box collider. I chose or I opted in to use the uh, widget option box collider auto adjust to match uh, the scale uh, of our sprite just in case it happens to change over time or whatever. Alternatively, as I said, you could adjust it manually if that's unchecked. If you, maybe you didn't want it to bleed off in the edges over here and stuff like that, but that's up to you. Then we simply added a UI button script. Uh, the box collider allowed us uh, to be able to click it and um, pretty much that that's that. <laughs> and then uh, on our UI button component uh, there's an on click option and uh, you can pretty much just let me delete that real quick and I'll show you what we did. We just uh, took our code block that we created dragged it over there to the notify option and then simply selected the method that we wanted to invoke um, as you can see here it's code block dot home button popped over to the code and uh, made sure that that variable or that method was already available uh, via public void and then method the method needs to be public in order for it to be seen so obviously you make it public if uh, you don't make it public, you're going to run into this problem. I've seen uh, this posted on the forums a couple of times. Let that code compile real quick. All right. Let me delete this. And then notify. And as you... That was the wrong thing. I didn't mean to add that. Let me add the code block to the notify. <laughs> All right. And as you can see, it's not here anymore. So, best thing to remember, make your methods public if you're going to invoke them uh, from another component or script. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let that finish compiling real quick. And I can go ahead and take my code block and add it back over here. And then, obviously, I can see my uh, code block dot home button method again. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, in our code, we created a simple, you know, if our uh, Boolean I window is uh, false, go ahead and print it's true now because we changed the variable to true. Uh, then, you know, if it's if it is not false, if it's true, go ahead and print I window false, and then we changed it to false. So. Uh, that's pretty much if you open or close a window or something like that. That just shows you uh, some basic uh, code that you can kind of plug in there. I'll publish this code just in case you have any problems. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. I kept it under 15 minutes, uh, which I knew would be pretty a pretty short video, as I explained earlier. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, comment if you have any questions or anything like that. Subscriptions to the channel really helps me be able to see that there's a little bit more interest and I can continue creating videos and things like that. Uh, also, look out for uh, the unit. Look out for us on the Unity Asset Store. We're going to be creating a complete uh, UI system, uh, inventory, main menu, level selector, and stuff like that. Hopefully, we're going to be able to use uh, Bunt Games' uh, tiny mobile UI packs that they provide for free on the Unity Asset Store as well. Uh, we contact, we reached out to them, and hopefully, they'll contact us back and and give us the go ahead that we can. Uh, use their textures and stuff like that uh, you know to give you guys a free uh, asset uh, 
GUI. Other than that, my name is Justin. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, please post in a comment. See you later. Thanks.